Guys, let's do this. Let's not waste any time this episode. I am so excited for this new season, and it begins here in this game against the Chicago Blackhawks. Thatcher Demko takes the net, and we start off with a 4-2 loss to the Blackhawks. So that is certainly not ideal, but we will sim these next two games before Nyquist gets the net back. Although if Demko loses all three games, and we have lost, surprisingly, there have been no changes uh, to our roster whatsoever. But we have lost our first three games of the season, and I am really starting to doubt that Jodemko, an 8-9-4 save percentage in those games, and Nyquist could really put the pressure on early here in this new season if he gets the win against the New Jersey Devils, and he doesn't. It's a 4-3 loss, and the <laughs> maybe the luck has run out. <laughs> Just maybe the luck has run out. We start off this season with an 0-4 record, as opposed to the Sharks, which I just saw were a perfect 4-0. So that is a very interesting start to this new year. The top line is struggling. The second line is struggling, although DeRocher is up to an 89. So interesting, uh, interesting start to this season, guys, for sure. Definitely wasn't expecting that, but obviously it's early, but you definitely don't want to start on the wrong foot this uh, this soon. We will sim these next three games here. I'm going to give Demko these two games. If we don't get our first win, okay, so we got our first win. Demko will be in goal here uh, against this game against Boston and the rematch against the uh, rematch against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Schneider complaining about ice time which is something I was a bit worried about. We lose 3-2 to Boston. I will take a look at the line in a minute um, and maybe boost him up beyond the fourth line. A game against Columbus, we get our second win of the season. They're calling for the draft to be a bit weaker than normal. To be honest, it could be the weakest draft in the world, and with our luck right now, we'd still snag at least the top six forward. So things are looking good, but Schneider not happy with being on that line and to be honest right now Kajula is struggling so I'm gonna put Kajula down on that fourth line with Gallant and Bolt and we will give Schneider the chance with Danton Heinen and Jonathan Drewen. everything else will remain the same with the exception of Nyquist getting the next start against the Buffalo Sabres and of course after this game we'll be able to do a decent bit of simming so this game against Buffalo it's a shootout win. I will take care of the scouting off screen. But looking ahead, we are going to be simming to this game on November 5th against the Minnesota Wild. So let's see what happens. Can we rebound from a surprisingly slow start? And needless to say, the answer to that question was yes. Five consecutive wins, two in overtime over Nashville and the New York Islanders. But five consecutive wins uh, to end and begin the month of November. So things are looking up suddenly for the Canucks after that rough start. And we are back into second place in our division. So an early scare, but I'm glad to see that this team is starting to trend in the right direction. Again, it is so early in this new season. We're only 13 games in, but an early struggle can certainly just kill all momentum for the season. Thatcher Demko so far, obviously five consecutive wins. He's up to a 9.28 save percentage. That is what we expect out of him. And perhaps that's, aside from needing a defender, um, or at least better defensive prospects aside from Chitron, maybe that is something, or at least that's something we don't have to look into now, I should say, uh, due to our goalies down in Utica. That is certainly a helpful situation as we magically, thank God, cut our hands on a great goalie prospect. We had a good goalie prospect anyway in Bergeron, despite being back of potential. But Nyquist with that last game and things, of course, continuing to look all right. We are now in first place in our division. And let's do a quick team meeting just to keep that morale edging upward. Obviously, with the amount of trades and the roster movement that we do, really screws up the morale. We will sim these next three games live, though, obviously, because of the back-to-back. -back. The win streak continues. It continues to continue in a game against Tampa. And, my God, the Vancouver Canucks have caught fire here 
early on in this season. Five, six, seven, eight, nine wins in a row for the Canucks. We are up to a 12, 4, and 1 record. And with a 98 overall offense, did we really expect anything different? You know, and that's the thing. I know I can't help but bring it up because I know it's it's insane that we won three titles in a row. But just look at the team. Look at the team that we have continued to just build around. I mean, I'm not shocked at all at this point anymore. I mean, the goalies are weak spot, and it's an 86 overall. And we've seen teams win the cup or knock us out of the playoffs with fucking 83 overall goalies. But Nyquist in against the Blue Jackets. He gets a 3-2 win. Unfinished business for him. Of course, not really being involved in that series. Actually, he wasn't involved in that series at all. He got hurt uh, very early on, or was it the last Nashville game? To be honest, I don't remember. But the winning streak hits 10 games, so that's fantastic. But of course, we're only 18 games into this new season. Another quick uh, team meeting there just to boost that morale, which is up to a 79% point hopefully we can get up to about the mid 80s by the time we hit the midway point of the season but Demko reclaims the goal we've had no reason to take it from him I do want to check that third line Drouin 19 points Heinen 17 only five for Schneider but he hasn't complained since uh or since yeah but Bolt Gallant and Kajula not the biggest point totals how it's go how is it going on the second line I should say I'm getting way ahead of myself here Carlson nah DeRocher nah and Hendry nah so, yeah, I mean, we don't have the biggest point totals right now, but simply put, this team is getting it done, and we will look to do a decent bit of simming here again. We're already through the month of November, heading in to December, uh, to this game on December 3rd against the Edmonton Oilers, the struggling Edmonton Oilers. Let's see what happens. How long, just how long can this winning streak go? Now, if you guessed that we would have immediately lost and lost three of our next five, you get a gold star on the day, but we are currently on a three-game winning streak as we hit this game against the Edmonton Oilers. A couple of injuries along the way. Troy Stetcher missed about two games, and currently Drake Kajula is injured. But aside from that, things are looking okay. Obviously, we continue to win with our record now 18 seven and one on the season wade savage has gotten the call up we have shifted up the lines just a little bit more and mainly the problem right now is finding the balance between players who are performing and needing them to be in their proper player role so that they don't uh you know drop in morale and we don't risk losing somebody over a very stupid reason but here we go this game against the oilers and we get a two nothing shutout win and moving forward, we will be simming towards the end of the month here. It'll be this game on the 27th against the Anaheim Ducks. By the way, three games against the Kings in our next five. What is up with that? So as we hit our target destination, things continue to go well. Three losses in that span, one to Nashville, L.A., and an overtime or actually shootout loss to the Winnipeg Jets. But we have suffered some injuries, Danton Heinen and Seth Jones among them, but we still have a 24 nine and two record as we approach the end of the year or at least in 2023 not the end of the season of course because of the injuries we've had to mix and match lineups so it's kind of been a clusterfuck but regardless we're still winning which is a wonderful sign uh this game against the anaheim ducks could prove to be big anaheim not the worst team this year but we do beat them four to two and we'll stay with this live here because we have another back-to-back -back coming up within the next month. But we are top of the division yet again. But unfortunately, Calgary, San Jose, Anaheim, it is going to be a dogfight for that division title for the entire year. As I think we all kind of expected it to be. Even the Arizona Coyotes aren't out of it. They have 19 wins on the season. So this will be a pretty big game for Demko. The Winnipeg game, not so much, although it would be nice to beat a competitive team but this game against the Coyotes it's a 2-1 win and then Demko against the Jets Sloan is back in Utica we are going to have to put him in we need him in the lineup to continue growing in terms of uh in terms of big overall uh changes not too many I mean Hall and Doyle and Backlund for that matter are all up to 79 so things are looking good there 
but we don't have anybody that's like an 84 or anything like that or anything crazy like Shanahan last year I think was what an 82 83 nothing crazy like that yet but we do hope to get there by the end of the year and of course it'd be lovely to see the Utica Comets return to the Calder Cup playoffs now this game against the Jets we get that done that will take care of the scouting in a second as we change over the goaltenders and uh yeah still in first place here as we approach the halfway point of the season 38 games down of course 41 being the halfway point jonathan Druen, happy i've gotten about 18,000 messages from eric carlson saying how happy he is with his playing time so i'm glad he's feeling insecure for some reason i don't know maybe his wife left him or something or some kind of comment who knows i'm not going to speculate he's 33 he can make his own life decisions but let's see here this game against the Blackhawks for Nyquist. It is a 3-2 win, and we enter the new year. We start the new year with a win. Of course, any win at this point. The more, the more we can keep this winning streak going, the better. Get as much separation from the rest of the pack as we can, just in case a uh, collapse like last year happens. Although... That did not prove to be too costly. Not having home ice advantage didn't absolutely kill our chances uh, last year. But looking forward now, we will get a uh, actually quite a decent bit of simming done here. We are going through the entire month of January to February 1st as we go to this game against the Edmonton Oilers. The struggling Edmonton Oilers. How will the month of January treat us? Will we continue to rack up the wins? Let's find out. A 7-4 stretch as we enter the month of February. 35-12-3 on the season. We have a decent bit of space between ourselves and the second place Calgary Flames. Jonathan Drouin once again leading the team of points thus far. But as you can see, even in games, 9 points clear of the Calgary Flames. So, so far, we are off to our best pace yet in terms of projected point total. But I'm a little bit wary because we definitely could collapse like we did last season. But Thatcher Demko right now playing some great hockey, a 9.25 save percentage. Nyquist, unfortunately, hasn't gotten as many games as we would have liked. And there are still some injuries. Danton Heinen is still out through all of this time. He has not returned, although Seth Jones has. But let's see, Nyquist gets the start here against Edmonton. And it is a 5-1 victory. Yet another win. Now 36 on the season for the Canucks, and we have just 29 games left to go in this new season. Of course, breezing through, getting to the important parts, because honestly, we don't have any changes we need to make depth-wise, defensively. Koroliuk is able to step in and do a fine job as far as the injuries go, so we really don't need anything. Of course, we got Stetcher already, so we're just going to keep going, and we're actually going to finish up the month of February here as we sim to this game. Well, actually not, and hey, look, it's a leap year. Uh, we're going to go to the end of the month here, uh, in this game against the Montreal Canadiens on February 28th. Despite an ungodly amount of injuries to both the NHL and AHL roster, we finish with a 6-5 stretch in the month of February, 42-15-5 on the season. Big time, big time performances from some of our players to allow us to stay up here. Because pretty much every name you can think of has been injured. Heinen's finally come back. Matthews has been injured. Uh, right now, Jonathan Drouin is out. Triamkin has been injured. Seth Jones has been injured again. It's been a very, very rough stretch for us. A lot of, uh, a lot of boring downtime, having to screw around with the menus and constantly call people up. But the good news is Jonathan Drouin is back. We, of course, will have Thatcher Denko. In goal, we're going beyond the trade deadline, and we are going to sim right up to this game on the 25th, March 25th, against the Philadelphia Flyers. It would be nearly impossible for us to not hit 50 wins at this point, only 7 wins away from that. And it seems like unless we hit another massive down spell that we are destined to once again win the division title. But anything could happen here. It's a big, big sim period for this team. Let's see what happens. The injury bug continues to bite. We lost three of our first four games in the sim period, but ever since, it's been a six-game winning streak in the Vancouver Canucks with plenty of time to spare 
have hit the 50 win mark 50 18 and 5 on the season and we become the first team in our division to clinch a playoff spot i cannot overstate how many injuries our team has suffered from this year so it's been just fantastic like it's been killing me having to edit the roster this many times but it's been a fantastic season so far for the canucks and we're not done yet there's one thing that has eluded us despite all of our success and that would be the president's trophy and that is the goal with nine games left in the season we are currently nine points clear of the flames still but we also have a game at hand and as far as the president's race goes it's ours to lose we have a game at hand on the Islanders, and we are still eight points clear. So right now, we are in the driver's seat to win that one trophy that has eluded us for so, so long at this point. We've done everything else but that. So here we go. This game against the Flyers. It is the first game for a while for Torsten Nyquist, and he gets a 6-2 victory. Down in Utica as well, I should mention I've just started to go uh, with the best lines option in an effort to try and get them into the playoffs because unfortunately running with the uh, players in the lines based on potential has not exactly led to a winning formula with the comments but that is okay you know if they don't make the playoffs it is what it is but obviously that extra bit of hockey would certainly help to give them more time to progress but let's do this back to the sim eight games left and we're going to sim these next two games against Pittsburgh and Dallas, and I'm pretty sure our last games of the season are all against Western Conference teams. Again, we lose both games, which is pretty disappointing, but of course we did. You know, I point out the fact that I want that President's Trophy, and all of a sudden, we are going to start to lose. But apparently, with a win tonight against the Flames, we can clinch the conference, which would be uh, nice, especially after last year's decline. But the Vancouver Canucks continue to dominate, which is... Uh, which is good, and we will actually check after this game. We have six games left, of course, five after this one, and that's when we'll check the standings again to see where we stand in terms of uh, that President's Trophy race, because, again, that is the one thing that has eluded us. But back-to-back -back games, a home-at-home -home against Calgary. We start up on the road, and we get a 3-1 victory. That clinches us the Western Conference. So for the first time... Uh, Actually, no, we just took a year break, didn't we? It wasn't two years ago. I'm pretty sure we just took a one-year break, and then we regained the conference title. But what a season here for the Canucks. But the task at hand is now the Calgary Flames once again, who have fallen into second place behind the Arizona Coyotes. So the Coyotes really surging back. And, uh, man, Edmonton and L.A., not that good yet again. But 109 points, obviously, the division is wrapped up but is the president's trophy and it very well should be we are 10 points clear technically the islanders can catch us because they have five games left one point is all we need to clinch that president's trophy let's do it right here against the flames come on and there it is with an overtime win guys we have clinched our first president's trophy we continue to be the best team in the NHL and that was without Chitron. I never mentioned that Chitron was injured throughout that time so again the injury bug has been absolutely horrific but uh, actually let's take a look at his stats really quick Koroliuk here has been the guy we've called up for the majority of it. He hasn't really uh, hasn't really done anything point wise or plus minus wise but in 21 games he's been solid for us and that's what we've needed out of him he stepped in much like Puto did and uh, Nikolishin did last year. Just when called upon, a very reliable hand. I really just should jump cut this out to edit this. But screw it, we will be wrapping up the video anyway. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Just a great season overall for the Canucks. And as we figure out who we will be playing in the first round... I might as well just say the intro or the uh, intro. Yeah, I'm going to say the intro now this far into the episode. I might as well say the outro now. Um, of course, if you have enjoyed this episode, feel free to drop a like. Hit that like button. It helps out the channel. Seriously, it does helping me get into search algorithms. 
and all that in the suggestion bars and all that stuff really does help out the channel surprisingly a lot of my clicks and you guys have said it in the comments too once you found my videos hey I found you through you know just searching this or uh, you know clicking on this video and you know watching somebody else's channel and it popped up in the suggestions feed leaving a like does help with that kind of stuff I did not mean to sim that San Jose game I meant to give that to Nyquist we'll give Nyquist the last game of the season we are on 56 wins my god uh, but yeah, to finish the outro, of course, you know, the outro before the actual outro, subscribe if you haven't already because uh, it might be getting boring at this point, but we're going for four consecutive cups as we have hit 56 wins. We lose our last game 6-3. to three. The Utica Comets will not be in the playoffs, so all eyes are on the Canucks once again as we uh, we look to make true the dream of the Miami Heat as we're going for our fourth championship. It's just a matter of who we are going to play in the first round. It very well could be the Arizona Coyotes. Actually, I think it will be uh, based on that, unless they miss out on that wild card spot. And that's not very uh, dramatic. And it is the Minnesota Wild in the first round. Not who I was expecting, to be honest, clearly. And actually, oh, that's why, because the Coyotes finished top three in the Wild. Must have gotten that uh, that fifth wild card spot or the second wild card spot. But there you have it, guys. 56 wins, 98, 93, 91 in terms of our ratings. Thatcher Demko has rebounded very nicely, and this team has had yet another successful season. Needless to say, we are the favorites heading into the playoffs as if we weren't already with our success in recent years. But... My God, 12 points ahead of the next team. Just a dominant, dominant season. But guys, like I said, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time as we take on the Minnesota Wild in the first round. Can we make it a four-peat? We don't have to worry about Nashville, L.A., Anaheim, San Jose. Well, actually, we might have to worry about San Jose. But San Jose of Chicago is probably my guess for the team coming out of the semi. Anyway, I'm rambling, as I tend to do. Again, I thank you all for watching, and I will see you in round one.